so much, Senator. We're, we're going to be right with you there in the fight that you spoke of. And Representative Joe Weaker, I did want to recognize you again. And you're my sister and her husband's uh, state representative down in Loveland. So and I know they vote for you all the time. Um, are there any other office holders here that maybe we can't see? Illinois Nurses for Life President, Eileen Grady. I'm sorry? Eileen Grady, Illinois I Nurses for Life President. Oh, here. Very nice to see you, Eileen. Thank you so much for coming. Where did you come from? Illinois. Oh, from Illinois. Uh, She's the one that tied all the beers. I've been fighting for unborn since 1976. Oh. I hope this does it, because then we can go back to Illinois and get them started. That would be awesome. I'd save the babies. <laughs> well, he said it all weekend, but that's okay. Okay. <laughs> My name is Linda Reidelbach, and I'm on the executive committee of Ohio Pro-Life Action. And later you're going to hear from Paula Westwood. She's also on the executive committee of Ohio Pro-Life Action. She's also the executive, executive director of Greater Cincinnati Right to Life. I have your binky. <laughs> Also, Julie Busby, Mark Harrington, Janet Folger, and we're also going to have some um, children who are going to make some comments. And if you've got a copy of the agenda, you'll notice only some of us have our name, ages after our names. <laughs> there. Zach, be a good boy. Go sit with Paula. Okay. But even though all of, all of us adults are here, the main event today are the children, all the children, we have some still sitting out here, and the bears. We have 33 bears, one for each senator, and they're just not ordinary bears. Well, that would be nice. These bears have a heartbeat inside of them, and it's the heartbeat of an 18-week-old human baby. Hey, darling. These beautiful children have come from around the state to present these bears to the senators, to thank them for their service, and to urge them to pass the heartbeat bill now. <clears throat> By passing this bill, and we could pass it into law this year, this month, not this year, <laughs> this month, and by doing so, 26,000 or more babies will be saved every year every year in the state of Ohio. And as the, the nurse from um, Illinois said, then it's going to happen in states across our nation. And how momentous it would be for this to be signed into law in the same month as the 39th anniversary of Roe v. Wade. So with that, I will give you Paula. pictures with his, her <laughs> little grandson. Um, as we know, abortion is a civil rights issue of our times, and without it, um, all our other freedoms are meaningless. And after nearly <coughs> four decades of legal abortion on demand, Americans are numb to um, abortion's true nature, and they're further confused by the um, belief that if it's legal, it must be right. And of course, the heartbeat bill exposes this false state of affair. And these beautiful children and their special deliveries are visible reminders that every single one of us began as a child in the womb. We forget that. And just as each of us were privileged to be protected from our earliest beginnings, from our first heartbeat, those yet to be born deserve the same protections, and they need us to work for them. And this is what the protection that the heartbeat bill will provide. Thank you for being here. So good morning everyone, my name is Julie Busby and I'm a member of Ohio Pro-Life Action and today I'm here with basically one message and that is for those senators who are pro-life but are questioning whether now is the right time to pass the heartbeat bill. And I believe this message could best be said by Martin Luther King Jr. in his book, Why We Can't Wait, 
which was written to send a message to those who felt that it was not the right time to end segregation. And this is what he said, quote, I have almost reached the conclusion that the Negro's great stumbling block in his stride toward freedom is not the white citizen's counselor or the KKK, but the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I cannot agree with your methods of direct action who paternalistically believes he can set the timetable for another man's freedom, who lives by a mythical concept of time, and who constantly advises the Negro to wait for a more convenient season. Shallow understanding from people of goodwill is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. Lukewarm acceptance is much more bewildering than outright rejection." Unquote. And so I would like to ask today our pro-life senators that they do not take the route that Martin Luther King Jr. referred to with the white moderate who his complacency was more of an obstruction to the civil rights movement than the KKK, and instead that they would stand on the principles of life and justice and pass the heartbeat bill immediately. Thank you very much. My name is Janet Folger Porter, and I'm with Faith to Action, America's largest network of pro-family organizations. Uh, good to see you here, Representative Eager, one of the uh, 53 co-sponsors of the House. Glad you're here, and you have heard from every single constituency, save one. You have heard from, well, you've heard from the baby, as Senator Height said a moment ago. This is the picture that appeared uh, in newspapers across the state. This baby testified in the House Committee via ultrasound uh, projector as we heard and saw the beating heart of a baby in the womb. And this same baby, baby Hallie, was presented in the Senate. So we've heard from 